Greetings in the blessed name that is above every name, Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful to God for all of his loving kindness and his tender mercies. And I want to thank you for joining us today for this uh, broadcast. Uh, God has been good to us, and because of his mercy and his grace, we are here today. I'm Pastor Arthur W. Goforth III, the pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church, 707 Arista Road, Bowman, South Carolina, where we are a people who love God, and we know that God loves us, and we want you to come to know that same love from our Heavenly Father. For John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So our desire is that every person would come to know the saving power of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to pay for your sins. I trust and pray that you have a wonderful and safe week. Uh, I'm stating the obvious, uh, although some people don't seem to be aware of it, but we are in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, I, I'm so uh, encouraged by those of you who are taking the necessary uh, precautions uh, to prevent yourself from catching Corona-19. Wear your face mask, wash your hands, and exercise social distancing. Don't let your guard down because this thing is serious. I also want to thank you for exercising your faith by continuing to support the work of God's kingdom. Uh, you are li a living testimony of your faith in God that you believe and know that the Lord will take care of you every day. Uh, through every day and all the way. So continue to be a blessing and I know that the Lord will bless you. Remember, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. So again, thank you. Uh, I want to encourage all of you to uh, be vigilant and watchful and active in your civic and social duties. Please, please, please complete the 2020 census as soon as possible. Uh, that, that time is uh, about to wind up, I believe it's September 3rd, somewhere around there. But please, brothers and sisters, you can go online and complete it if you need help. You can hit us up on Facebook or email and we'll point you in the right direction. Also, register to vote. Register to vote. Uh, you can register online. Also, check your voter status. It may have changed since the last time. There are a lot of people who are playing games this year. And uh, so we need to do everything we can to make sure that we have all of our ducks in order. You can request an absentee ballot right now. Ballots will be mailed out starting October uh, the 5th, but you can request it now. And in-person absentee voting uh, starts on October the 5th. So you don't have to wait. You can go on October the 5th and begin uh, do, complete your absentee ballot. But we're going to win this game. So register to vote and vote early, vote absentee. Let's win this game. Also, you can volunteer to work at the poll. Sign up. Uh, it's not enough just to talk the talk, but we need people to walk the walk. You've got to do everything we can to, to win this struggle, to win uh, victory and empowerment for everyone in this country. Let me take this time to thank those who work behind the scenes. Uh, 
there are people who are working uh, in the ministry uh, while we're at, at, at the distance, at home, so forth. I want to thank our trustees, our deacons, the, the financial team, the audio-visual ministry, and the, uh, the virtual ministry production that uh, produces this uh, uh, broadcast on YouTube and Facebook. I want to especially thank my son Jonathan, who uh, has encouraged me through this process. When uh, we went virtual, uh, it was all new to me, but uh, we thank God for our young people. Uh, I have some young adult uh, children, my son and my daughter. They have been a great help and encouragement. And of course, my wife, who encourages me and uh, prays for me and helps me. Uh, to continue on uh, serving the Lord. I want to ask you to uh, keep following us on social media, Facebook and YouTube. We do have a Twitter account, but we are not, I'm not up on the Twitter too much. So follow us on Facebook and YouTube and tell your family and your friends and your neighbors to join us. But I want to thank you again for joining us uh, again today. Uh, God has a text message for us today that is comes from the book of Exodus. Exodus, the 20th chapter, and I want to lift up one verse. Our text today comes from the 12th verse, which says, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Amen. The grass withers and the flower fades but the word of our God endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our head in prayer. Lord God, we thank you, Father. We praise you and we love you. And we thank you for this opportunity to stand again, to lift up your word and your, your name. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts. We ask for anointing that would uh, enable us to preach and teach this word which you've given to me. Actually, it, it would find good soul, open ears, good soul, open hearts to receive, to hear and to not only hear, but to practice and do what uh, you have said to us. So Lord God, have your way. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight for you are our strength and our Redeemer. I pray in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We continue today in the series uh, from, the, about, from the Ten Commandments. Live free, excuse me, set free, set free to live free. Set free to live free. Today we're looking at the fifth commandment, the fifth commandment, uh, and I want to tag this text, Forever Children, Forever Children. Exodus 12, 20 verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you you forever children. In the 1934 uh, movie uh, production of Imitation of Life, I say 1934 because there have been at least two productions, one in one 1934 and the other in 1959, but in the production of 1934, a widow named B. Pullman meets Delilah Johnson, who is a homeless black mother. 
uh, who lived in Coney Island, New York. Uh, as the movie progresses, they soon find themselves sharing a tiny apartment, and each one has uh, a daughter. Uh, B has a little girl named Jessie, who is small and obnoxious. And Delilah has a little girl named Piola, who is light-skinned and doesn't like being black. So she spends the whole film trying to pass for white. And one scene uh, really struck uh, me. Uh, it, it was something had happened and uh, Delilah, Piola's mother, had to go to the school to get her. Uh, when she arrived at the school, uh, it was an all-white girls class and the teacher was white and the teacher said ma'am may I help you she said yes I came to get my daughter and she said you must have made some mistake uh, but she said no 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 my daughter is here there she is right there uh, pointing to Piola and all the little white girls look at Piola and they are shocked, they are surprised. The teacher is shocked and surprised and Piola is embarrassed. She says, that's not my mother, you're not my mother. And, and uh, Delilah says, yes baby, come on, we have to go, we have to go. And Piola finally gets up and she, she, they leave out and Piola says, I hate you, I hate you. And Piola, uh, uh, Delilah says, Piola, you're still my child. You're still my child, and you'll be my child forever. Piola grows up and moves away, and she attempts to live out her dream of being white. And while she's away, Delilah has a heart attack from heartache and heartbreak because she knew that Piola would who didn't want to be black would always be her daughter forever this fifth commandment has sometimes been seen as a word for children and how true that is this commandment is for all children all children it's not just little children uh big children but it's this this command is for young children and old children because lest you forget every one born into this world is somebody's child. Every person on this planet has parents and that in itself makes everybody somebody's child. We are all children of our parents and we are their children forever. You and I are we're born to our parents, and listen, you can't be unborn. I was born to Arthur and Gladys Goforth II, and I will forever be the child. Even at the age of 64, they passed on and gone to glory, but I am still their child. I'll be their child forever. And listen, all of us are children by virtue of God creating us and even more significant and of greater eternal relevance is the fact that when one so anyone calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation they are born again into the family of God because the Bible says in John, the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verse 12, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right or the authority to become the children of God to those who believe in his name. So we who are believers become uh, God's children forever. Those who have yet to believe are, are children of Satan. In Exodus 20, verse 12, God addresses the children of Israel. 
uh, Jacob's descendants, the Hebrew children, as we sometimes call them, who God delivered out of Egyptian bondage. They were set free to live free. And a part of God's uh, liberation process and plan is this, this, this fifth commandment to get his children to understand uh, what it means to live free. Uh, he set them free to live free, and he gives this fifth commandment after he gave the other four commandments as to men relating to him as their God. He gives this fifth commandment. Think of it. This fifth commandment about honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long on the upon the land which the Lord, your God, is giving you. The first four commandments challenge us in our relationship with God. The last six commandments focus on our relationship with each other. And the truth is, you aren't properly relating to God until you are properly relating to those that you walk with and talk with and eat with and sleep with and live right beside here on earth. So this commandment is important because it deals with the most tender of all relationships, that of parent and child. It's because family relationships are the foundation of our society. And what we see happening in the home, we will see happening in society. And if you flip it, what you see happening in society, you will see happening in the home. And so God gives this tender but yet stern commandment of honor father and mother. That word honor is the key word in in the verse, it's the key word, it's the Hebrew word kabod, uh, which means to be heavy, to be heavy. The basic idea is to treat someone with respect because they carry a heavy weight of authority. Let me say that again so that it might seek in. Uh, uh, honor is the Hebrew word kabod, which means to be heavy. To be heavy, it, it, it means to treat someone with respect because they carry a heavy weight of authority. And if you hadn't realized that those of you who are parents, you carry a heavy weight of authority. You have a heavy responsibility, a heavy weight of authority. So to honor means to treat with dignity, with respect, and with high regard. High regard. And I will say that it's easy to, to, to do that to parents who are kind, who are loving, who are caring, who are, 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 are honorable. But the question is raised, how do you honor and respect someone who is not honorable and does not deserve your respect? Well, please notice that this command is to all children, all children, uh, that this command to honor is in full total, uh, it's in full total force uh, from, 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 from all who are children towards their parents. In regard, and it does not regard how the parents perform. Uh, unfortunately, we have parents who are absent. We have parents who who are abusive, who are mean and cruel, who are uncaring, and many who are uninvolved in their children's lives. But their faults and their failures don't excuse any of us from keeping the fifth commandment. It, it doesn't say honor your parents if they are honorable, if they deserve it, or, or if they treat you right. 
No, God, when he makes this command, he doesn't stutter or stammer, but he gives this command. He gives it emphatically saying, honor your father and your mother, period. That's it, period. Honor them, and your father and your mother, uh, for it will set you free to live free. Lord help us. He it will when you honor your father and your mother, it will set you free to live free. You see, so many uh, adult children and young children are in bondage to their feelings towards their parents. My parent doesn't care anything about me. My mom did this to me. My dad did this to me. He he wasn't around. He wasn't in my life. And so you walk around in bondage to your feelings about your your parents. Uh, your parents may even be in the grave and you still have feelings concerning them. So God is writing this to all of his children saying, honor your parents, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land in which I'm giving you. I'm giving you this command after I say, I, I am the Lord your God. There is no God bes beside me. Don't make images of me. Huh? He gives that command concerning him. Worship me. Set aside a day to worship me. But then he says, honor father and mother, because this is so important. This is so important because all the foundation, all the, all the foundation of society is based upon the relationships that we have in our home. And if you are hung up, you are, you're stuck, you're in bondage to your feeling about your parents, you are not free. But God says, I want you to be free. You are set free in Jesus Christ, been forgiven of your sins, and you ought to forgive others of their faults and failures and their sins so that you can live free. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, I hear you saying, why, why should I honor my parents when they don't deserve it? Why should I honor them and they haven't earned any honor? Well, let me give you three reasons why and two ways how. And I'll promise you I won't be long with it. Huh? Well, there are three reasons why you should honor your parents. We should honor our parents. And the first reason is this. Because it is right. It is right. Ephesians 6 chapter verse 1 says, the Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is what? Right. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And that in the Lord means uh, if they are not telling you to sin, if they are not telling you to go against God's word, you have no excuse or reason not to obey them. I know every every parent isn't a Christian. Every 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 parent isn't a follower of Christ, but still they are leading you. They're they're giving you uh, uh, some structure in your life of what to do, right? And, and if they are not telling you to sin, you should follow that. You should oh, you should do that. Why? Because it is right. Proverbs 23, verse 22 says, listen to your father. Proverbs 23, 22. Let me say that again so in case you missed it. Listen to your father who gave you life. And do not despise your mother when she is old. Mm. Some of us don't listen to our father because he wasn't around. He can't tell me anything. Huh? He, he's no good. He did this. He abused me. So he can't tell me anything. Uh, but the word of God says, listen to your father who gave you life. You have to sift it through the word of God. You have to see if it is reasonable for you to, to, to hear and obey. And, and some, when you listen to your mother when she was when she was young and in good health, but now that she's old, you disrespect and you disregard her as a nobody. But the Lord said, it is right to do this. It is right to do right by your parents. But then secondly, it pleases God. It pleases God. Colossians 3.20 says, children obey your parents in everything, in everything. Uh, again, that's excluding if they're telling you to do something wrong. 
obey them in everything, for this pleases the Lord. It pleases the Lord. Yes, it will please your parent, but more importantly, it pleases God. That, that, that puts honoring your parents on a spiritual level. So when you're honoring your parents, you are pleasing God. Every Christian ought to want to please God. It's right, it, it, it pleases God, but then it teaches respect for authority. Uh, that's why you should uh, honor them, because it teaches respect for authority. Romans 13, verses 1 and 2 says, Everyone must submit to the governing authorities, that for there uh, is no authority, there is no authority except that which God has established. The, the, the authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so bring judgment on themselves. Did you get that? Uh, the authorities have been established by God. So when you rebel against your parents, you're rebelling, you're really rebelling against God. Amen. Those are just three reasons. There are more. Those are just three reasons why you should honor parents. But I can still hear you saying, even virtually, I can hear you asking, how, how do I respect and honor someone uh, and show them courtesy and care when they don't deserve it, when they don't deserve my respect. Well, let me give you two ways how you can do that. First of all, number one, give them obedience. Give obedience. Give obedience. It, 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 it's a matter of obedience to God's appointed authority. Give obedience. Uh, you, Jesus is our example. He's our model. You remember the story uh, in, in, in uh, Luke's account where, where uh, Jesus and, and his family and all those from Nazareth had gone up to Jerusalem for the feast and, and they had stayed there through the feast. And then, and then when it was time to go, uh, Joseph and Mary joined with the caravan and all the families together, Joseph with his relatives, and everybody's going back. And they got a day's out, and they discovered that Jesus wasn't with anybody. So they go back, and they find Jesus. They look everywhere, everywhere, and they find Jesus in the temple talking with the elders. And, and they say, son, look, why you did this? Why did you do this to us? And Jesus said, did you not know that I must be about my father's business and then the scripture says something of instruction and example for us. It says, and Jesus submitted himself and he went back to Nazareth with them. He was obedient to them. He obeyed them. And then it adds that he grew in wisdom. He grew in stature physically and he grew in favor with God and with man. Hallelujah, somebody. So, so Jesus is our example of obedience. He, he went home. He submitted himself. And submit simply means falling into your place. Hmm? Uh, I believe that in the home, everybody has a place. The husband, the father is the head of the house. The wife, it, yes, they are, they are co-partners. They are married. But she has her place in the marriage. Can't have two heads. Two heads is an is a unseemly, a, a, a unusual monster. If I had two heads up here, something would be wrong with me. But, but he is the head and she is his wife. She's the head of the household as far as nurturing and taking care of the house and the children. And the children fall in the rank and they follow behind the parents. And so Jesus obeyed. He followed his parents. It, it's the principle of the rule of the roof. The rule of the roof. If a child, if you are a child, no matter what age, and you're living under your parents' roof, 
There should be obedience. There should be obedience. Hallelujah, somebody. That you should submit to uh, the parent. You should submit to the head of the house. Uh, now, there's a, there should be a difference between a 4-year-old, a 14-year-old, or a 24-year-old living in a house. See, because as a child grows uh, and becomes wiser, a wise parent will allow more uh, self-determination and, and more decisions with honor and respect. Huh? But while you are dependent upon your parents while you are under their roof, obedience is required. Hallelujah, somebody. So one way to honor your parents is by giving them obedience. Giving them obedience. That's how. Giving them obedience. But another way to honor them is to give respect. Give respect. As a child, when you do what you're asked to do, that's obedience. But the issue isn't always just doing what you're asked to do, whether you did it or not, but it's the attitude in which it's done. Uh, the attitude often is the indication of whether or not you are giving the proper respect to your parent. Because to me, uh, just as important as doing what I said to do is the attitude with which it is done. Is it one of respect? You see, uh, when, when I was growing up and my parents told me to do something, uh, they made sure that I did it with the right attitude. Or if, if I didn't have the right attitude, they, they never would know about it. Uh, sometimes I, I try to uh, display my displeasure with what they asked me to do. Go, go and clean up the kitchen and I'd be throwing the, the pots around, kind of laying around hard. And, and uh, 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 they asked me to do something, I slammed the door. They, they, they said, you better get back in here. What are you doing slamming that door? You better close that door the right way. Anybody have parents like that? Uh, or... Uh, they ask you to do something, you cross your eyes or you roll your eyes. They say, you better uncross your eyes for I slip. Well, make your eyes straight again. I'm about to say something. Uh, uh, you suck your teeth or, or, or you give the silent treatment. All of that is a matter of disrespect. And, and I can understand the struggle of respecting a person who hasn't earned respect, who, who's lived a way that doesn't uh, that makes it difficult for you to to honor them uh, when they 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 drink and they drug they live a a, a lifestyle uh, of irresponsibility they lack character you've observed this and you know that it's not right uh, it makes it difficult they the way that they treated you makes it difficult how do you honor how do you honor them well here it is here it is. You start with respecting the position that they are in. Respect the position that they are in. Leviticus 19 verse 3 says, Each of you must respect his father and his mother. Each of you must respect his father and his mother. Respecting your parents in, in, in the Old Testament was so serious. It was so serious that children were put to death for being rebellious and disrespectful. I mean, why do you think that God makes it the fifth command? Because this is serious that children obey and respect and honor their parents. You see, uh, you, you, you should show respect with your words, the way you talk, with the right tone, not with a little snip to it. You, you, should, you should show respect with, your, your, with the, the correct body gestures. See, sometimes you can, you know, do all that kind of stuff and, and it's disrespectful. Uh, you have to have the right attitude. Don't, don't be like little Johnny, and I know you've heard this joke, this, uh, not joke, but this, this little, uh, little uh, story before about the, the father who's driving down the road, 
and, and Johnny didn't have his seatbelt on, and his daddy said, Johnny, put your seatbelt on. He's in the back. Johnny, put your seatbelt on. Johnny still wouldn't sit down and put his seat back on. He said, Johnny, I'm telling you to put your seat belt on. Johnny still, he said, if you don't put that seat belt on, I'm going to pull this car over and I'm going to make sure, I'm going to give you something and make sure you have your seat belt on. Johnny got, finally got the message and he sat down and he put his seat belt on. It was, he was sitting there quietly and he said, Johnny, you okay? Johnny, you okay? And, and Johnny said, yes, sir. I'm sitting down on the outside, but I'm still standing up on the inside. And a whole lot of us can be like that. Even though we have done what has been requested of us, we are still being disrespectful on the inside. Listen, you may be a grown child, but don't stop giving your, your parents respect. Respect them. Don't talk to them like they are some child. Don't don't be disrespectful to them. Uh, don't misuse and and take advantage of their home, acting like this is your house, but it's not your house. It's their house. They worked hard for it. They provided so that you would have a place to live. Don't let they're letting you stay there now, beyond your time, to help you out. Respect their rules. Don't 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 drink in their house. Don't smoke in their house. Don't do things that that you know are against their rules, uh, because it's their house. Now, when you get your house, you can do whatever you want to do. Not if you're a Christian, because God, the Father, is still supposed to be in your house. But when you get your house, you can make your own rule. But as for me and my house, mm, honor. Respect your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Some of us, some of us get out and, and, and don't want to listen to mama and daddy anymore. But, but the idea, ideal behind this scripture is that once you get out the house, that you will keep on honoring them by living as they taught you to live according to the word of God. Mm. Just remember uh, that, that they've lived longer than you and they, they might know something that you don't know yet. Huh? Uh, and you are still their child forever. Hmm. Uh, father uh, uh, had his, his, his older father to come to live with him because he couldn't live by himself and, and uh, so he came to live with his son and his family and, and they had the father at the table and as the father ate he, he, he dropped crumbs and, and, and uh, wasted and spilled things and dribble, dribble, dribbled on the table and, and they would complain to him can't you do any better than that? Don't you see that you're doing this and da 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 da? And, and the daughter-in-law became so uh, uncomfortable and and upset with them that she took got a little table and a little stool and and sat it in the corner and got a bowl and made the elderly father sit in the corner and eat by himself. And he still made a mess. Uh, so she took his, his silverware away from him and said, well, since you can't eat with a, a spoon or fork, then you just eat with your hands. And he still made a mess. So she made a, a pig trough for him. And she put his food in the pig trough and said, since you're eating like a pig, then here's what you're going to eat from. Well, later uh, that evening, uh, they saw the little children with hammer and nail building something. And, and the dad walked by, and the mother came and said, What are you building, children? Oh, they were so happy. What are you building? And they said, We're building where you're going to eat when you get old. Mm. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have to remember that what we give, we get. Uh, uh, you, you didn't hear what I said. God says, be not deceived. 
God is not mocked, and that whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. Some, some of you just still didn't get it. Uh, Tupac said, the hate you give, uh, I'm going to leave that for the young people to finish, but what goes around comes around. So honor and respect your parents. Even when it may be difficult. Even when it may be difficult. Well, I'm done. But some of you, some of us have parents who have already gone to glory. Uh, but we're still forever their, their child. Yeah. They're gone, but we're still their children, and we'll be their child forever. And you can still honor your parents by not forgetting the name that they gave to you. That's what I would tell our children when they were getting ready to leave the house. Don't forget your name. Don't forget your name. Because my father, who, who's been gone for some 26 years now, told me that it's not just about you, but you've got my name. I worked hard for the name. I, I paid my dues for that name. I sacrificed for that name. My name means something. And wherever you go, you're taking my name. So you need to watch how you treat my name because you are my child forever. And when I went out and I wanted to say something that was wrong in my mind, my conscience would say, you better remember the name. When I wanted to do something, when I wanted to do something I knew was illegal, or when I wanted to act a fool, I could hear my daddy's voice saying to me, remember, you carry my name. And when you carry my name, you need to walk a certain way. You need to talk a certain way. And all of us, brothers and sisters, who named the name of Jesus. We have a name that we need to remember. And we, not, we ought not to do certain things because of the name. We ought not to talk certain way because of the name. We ought not to act a certain way because of the name. So I'm here to tell you because we're children forever. We ought to respect and honor the name. Honor the name. Honor and respect the name. Well, what name are you talking about, Pastor? Well, in the Old Testament, there were 85 Old Testament names for God. Each one was designed to describe who he was and, and what he does. Do you remember any of the names? There was Elohim, who is God, the mighty creator. Remember the name. There was Adonai, which means Lord or master, or meaning that he is the boss. Do you remember the name? Lord with the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which stands for Yahweh. Jehovah God, the covenant keeping, the relatable God who can relate to his children. Do you remember the name? The name of Jehovah Jireh. Somebody said he is our provider. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who is our healer. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord's banner is over me. No matter who comes against me, 
God raises a standard against them. Hallelujah, somebody. Jehovah Shalom, for the Lord is my peace. Jehovah Shammah means that the Lord is right here. Jehovah Roah, meaning that the Lord is my shepherd. When nobody else sees me, when, when I'm left all alone, I thank him that his name is Jehovah Roah, meaning the Lord sees. I'm so glad that we have a name. I'm said, I'm so glad that we are God's forever children and we have a name that's on us because Jesus, he came and he brought down the name. And his name was Emmanuel, meaning God with us. His name is Jesus, Yeshua, meaning that he is the our God who saves. And I'm so glad that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I'm glad because I've been baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, somebody. So listen, brothers and sisters. Honor that name. Lift up that name. Respect that name. Praise that name. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Uh, see, God is saying, it's on you. It's on you. Uh, he said, honor them that your days may be long. To get the days, listen, to get the days that God intends for you, you need to honor your parent because he knows when you honor your parents, when you obey your parents, when you respect your parents, you're probably going to be around here a lot longer than if you dishonor them. Hallelujah, somebody. You see, it's not a guarantee that you're going to live 100 years, nor is it an indication that every child who die, dies young was disrespectful to their parents, but rather this is a general principle that, that an obedient child lives longer than a disobedient child. Hallelujah, somebody. Being disobedient while you're young can get you killed, can get you shot, can get, can, a whole lot of things can happen to end your days on this earth. But an obedient child, your parents are leading you to keep you. Hallelujah. And when you learn those principles, when you learn God's word, when you get older, those principles will keep you to, so that you will be able to live a longer life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I close with this, this uh, uh, illustration. Uh, there was an ungrateful son. A real story, though. In Boulder, Colorado, uh, a, a, a son, this is 1978, Thomas Henson sued his parents for $350,000 on the grounds of malpractice of parenting. $350 suit because, uh, based upon him, it was a malpractice of parenting. He said his mom and dad had botched his upbringing so badly that he had to sue them because he would need years of costly psychiatric treatment. Well, he got that right, that he does need psychiatric treatment. But I'm glad, brothers and sisters, that we have a father, we have a parent who woke us up this morning, who clothed us in our right mind, Brand new mercies every day. Reasonable health and strength. He puts food on our table. Clothes on our back. He forgives us. He, 
he he guides us he 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 delivers us he saves us he helps us he loves us he is there for us and i love him do you love god do you love him do you lord love the lord then honor him by honoring your parents your father and your mother. I know you have to work through some things, but and you can't do it on your own. It requires the help and the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's who he is. That's who the Holy Spirit is. He is our helper. He, he comes alongside of us to help us, to guide us in the right way. But not only only along beside of us, he lives inside of the believer, the person who accepts Christ. Christ lives on the inside to empower us to love when we can't do it on our own strength. And every time you are tempted to not honor, not to treat, not, not to treat your parent right, or to disobey, to not forgive, just remember what God has done for you. He has forgiven you. And we are to forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. Praise God. Forever children. We are his forever children. Children forever. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord God, our Father, we thank you and we praise you for being our loving God and our loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for the foundation of your word. You are God and you are God alone. You will have no other God before you. We are to make no idols, not even to come try to compete against you. We are to keep your name holy and keep the Sabbath day holy. And you have called us and commanded us to honor our parents, the first representation of you here on earth. I pray that this word, Lord, has fallen on good soil, the ears of the person who needs to hear uh, about their relationship with their parent. I pray that you would help them, Lord, to honor parents, help us to honor our parents, even uh, in our older age still to honor them and honor their memory by living holy according to your word. Thank you for this time. I pray for the person who's yet to receive you as their father, that they will call on the name of the Lord and be saved. And for the person who has rebelled and gone outside the house, I pray you call them back to yourself. We pray that you would do this, Lord. Save them, return them, restore them, forgive them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for joining us today for this message, this, this fifth word from the Lord. I pray that it's been a blessing to you. I pray that you would uh, continue to call on that great name and remember that you represent that name and everything. We look forward to seeing you and being with you on next time. God bless you.